On this week's KSP News Show, 1.1 being split into two new updates, and KSP News celebrates its 50th episode. 50th? Really? What the hell am I doing with my life? Bloody hell. <laughs> Reporting live from the Kerbal Space Center, it's your host, Jim Lee Kerman! Good morning, evening, and afternoon, my fellow Kerbanauts. My name is Jin Lee Kerman. Welcome back to this week's very, very special episode of the KSP News Show. As many of you are probably aware from the title of this video, this is the 50th episode of the KSP News Show. Wow! I did not know, did not think I'd be getting this far. For the whole of the series, in fact, I thought I'd probably make it to about 12 episodes and then get bored, or infamously get to like the second episode and stop doing a series, much like I have with every other series. Apart from Operation Exploration, that is still coming, that is still in progress, I'm just behind schedule because of college. Uh, but aside from that, and onto the actual KSP news sort of section of this video, uh, we're getting some pretty interesting things with regards to KSP 1.1, in that KSP 1.1 has in fact been sort of delayed? But it sort of hasn't, and I'll get into that right now. So before you all start upping arms in the comments saying, Boo! Squad, what are you doing? This is terrible for the game. You're spending too much development time on consoles, whatever. Just calm, calm down. I'm going to explain this all as best as I can anyway. Um, because it's not exactly what it first appears. So in case you've all been living under a rock for the past, I don't know, few months now, you'll know that of course KSP is going to be upgrading, or at least the initial plan was, to upgrade to the Unity 5 engine come 1.1's release. This was going to bring about a load of performance increases and uh, basically make the game a whole lot easier to develop for because the tools um, on it are a lot more up to date. Unfortunately though, the work and the backline work with regards to transporting the game over to Unity 5 did actually take a lot longer than Squad did actually first intend. And uh, there are a number of issues they came across, all of which they have now overcome, but this, the thing still needs a lot of bug testing because it is still rather broken at the moment, and so they actually need to get the thing running. Now, this not only made for really, really boring dev notes, hence the real lack of KSP news over the past, like, month or two, um, but it also take, means the uh, release date of 1.1 has kind of been pushed back, meaning that all of the new features, all the new parts, all of the new mechanics that they were going to um, bring in in 1.1, such as the uh, the relays, the probe relays, the, um, the various tweaks to the aerodynamics system, the new parts and stuff were going to be pushed back with it. Now, what Squad are doing now is going to be releasing an update called 1.0.5. Now what 1.0.5 is going to contain is going to contain the parts, the relay systems and several other features which have not yet been announced I believe but are currently going through QA testing. We should have more details on them in the next couple of weeks or so. And what Squad are going to be doing is leaving the Unity 5 update with all of the performance in tweaks, all of the UI overhauls and stuff like that for the actual 1.1 release, which will contain more stuff as well as just a performance stuff, obviously. But that's going to be the main focus of the actual 1.1 update, but to uh, to keep us fans as appetited, wetted, I suppose, if that's even a, a way to say that, we are going to be getting an update called 1.0.5, which is going to have all of these different new parts, uh, mechanics, like I said and tweaks uh, to keep us satisfied until the full release of 1.1 probably either around Christmas time or January that's just my estimate though so don't quote me on that it's gonna be ready when it's ready now I'll leave a link to the full dev blog down below uh, I think it's sometime around Tuesday that this thing was released so if you want to go read that do go scroll down a little bit on the blog in the link that I'll send put in the description um, but personally I feel that this is nothing but a good thing for KSP a lot of you will probably be thinking boo I'm still not gonna be able to run KSP uh, like with loads of mods and all this sort of thing, but in the long run, this is not uh, nothing but a good thing for KSP. Do you remember when 64-bit first came out? I remember the buggy mess it was before it was removed in 1.0 or 0.90 or whatever the update was. It was rushed out the door because the community demanded it, but despite, no matter what squad could do, 
they could not get that thing to run stably no matter how many um, t attempts they had to try and recreate the bugs they just couldn't because of the nature of the 4.6 engine but they got it out the door anyway because it's what the community wanted with the proviso of course that it was very very buggy but the community soon noticed that it was buggy and so squad naturally removed it now obviously they have the tools with unity 5 and they're working on the stable version of 64 bit but like i say Imagine if this same thing had happened with Unity 5. Imagine if the whole game, not just like a, a running, like a client for KSP was um, buggy. Imagine if the whole game was buggy and crashing frequently. We'd all be giving Squad and be giving Squad a massive backlash. And so the fact that they're choosing to delay that section of the update to like a later thing, I think is nothing but a good thing to give them a little bit more time in terms of development to make sure that it is in fact stable and a worthy quality release when it actually first comes. It also does mean as well that we are going to be getting the parts on time and everything and it's going to be awesome which means we're going to be able to make better and more cool looking ships in the future as well and also get to play with the new probe mechanic field thing that uh, is coming. I'm still not really a massive fan of that because personally I don't really play with that sort of with remote textile things but I'm sure it's just like the new aerodynamic model it's just something we'll have to get used to in KSP and something that we'll learn over time. But yeah I'm personally very very glad that squad made this decision but I want to know your thoughts in the comments down below let me know what you think of 1.1 being split into 1.0.5 and a future 1.1 update uh, do you think it's a good idea do you think it's a bad idea do you think that uh, this is overall improved like the stability of KSP what do you think this has done leave your thoughts in the comments down below as always I am very very interested to hear them I'll get down there and reply to some of them as well but yeah on to the birthday story for today well it's not really a birthday but it's more more, more celebratory Yay! Now I've already given this away a couple of times, well loads of times already for the course of this video so far, but this is in fact the 50th episode of the KSP News Show. This thing's been going for just over a year, I think it's like a year and three or four months now, and wow, I can't believe that I've got this far with the series. When I first started this series, I think we had about 50 or so subscribers, and well now, at the current count, we're at 850, so we've gained about 800 subscribers in the time that we've actually, I've actually been making these KSP News videos, so I think it's fair to say that KSP News has sort of been the backbone of my channel, shall we say. I said this a bit on my birthday episode, which was a while ago now, and um, I just can't believe how far this thing has come, and of course this show would not be what it is today if it wasn't for you guys commenting, supporting, leaving your opinions in the comments section down below, of course subscribing to the channel for seeing more and all that sort of stuff, and I just wanted to take this moment out to say thank you so, so much much for that. I often don't express my thanks as much as I should, but seriously guys, without KSP News and you guys supporting it, I genuinely would not be in the position that I am today in, uh, with, well, by the time this video releases or by the time you probably see it over 850 subscribers. Now that is just an insane number for me, bearing in mind the first two years of YouTube, I struggled to get over 30 subscribers, which I thought was a pretty decent achievement at the time, but uh, obviously we have more than surpassed that now, and uh, as you can probably see, we're coming up on 1,000 subscribers. Now, I have a little thing, a little something something planned for 1,000 subscribers. I'm not quite sure I'm going to get to work yet. It's still in the very, very early phases of planning. Um, but it would be awesome if you guys could tell your friends, tell everyone you know about my channel and get them to maybe leave a cheeky subscribe even if they don't uh, actually watch the videos. But if they're interested in space or, and or Kerbal Space Program and maybe take on Mars in the future, then get them to drop a cheeky subscribe or something. I know this is like a shameless plug, but um, at 1,000 subscribers I'm going to be doing something in real life. Um, I just hope that it works really because I've kind of been planning it for a while. It's still in the very early phases of development, should I say, but um, it's not anything computer-based, I should ask. It is, like I say, real life. But um, it's going to be some form of real-life rockets using Coca-Cola and propane. I don't know if you've seen the videos on YouTube um, of the Coca-Cola rocket, but that's what I have planned for... Um, for, for a thousand subscribers and if we could get there before Christmas of this year that would be amazing like seriously that would be incredible I don't I don't have the words to describe if we could get there in say a month or so and at the moment I think we are on target to reach there so like I say thank you guys so much for your support 
Thank you so much for the support you'll give me in the future if you guys choose to stick around, which I'm sure you will. You guys are po possibly the most civilized and amazing group of people I have ever actually come across, and without you, KSP News and my channel would not be the success that they are. So, here's to, an here's to another 50 episodes, here's to an amazing game, and lots of news to report on in the future, and here's to a Coca-Cola rocket when we eventually reach 1,000 subscribers. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much going to round it off for this episode. If you did like, please remember to like and subscribe for more, as I've probably already just spent the last four minutes going on about. Not sure about next week's show. Um, it depends on the dev notes and uh, the news that's left in them. But guys, I'm going to pretty much round it off for that, for that episode. Like I say, please remember to like and subscribe for more. My name is Jin Lee Kerman, and as always, stay classy.